Hello math class, welcome back to another lesson. This is lesson two, uh, angles formed by parallel lines, as you can see from the screen below and in the booklet as well. Uh, this lesson will introduce a few more relationships, but I think they're fairly intuitive. Uh, so if you, but if you have any questions about them at all, uh, please let me know uh, at once, as soon as we can. So let's see, section 2.2. Uh, we had talked about before when we had two parallel lines, and again, you're going to pretend that those are parallel. They're okay, they're okay for me. And we had a transversal crossing those parallel lines. We had talked about corresponding angles and how those are the same. So I'll put a little line through them here to kind of show that those are the same. And we had also mentioned a rule that if we had exterior and interior angles that were opposite of one another, like this and like this that they were the same so that is all going to hold true but what we're going to do is we are going to add a few more tricks up our sleeves so we don't have to go through like a process two two math processes you know it's like subtracting it from 180 and then finding out what it is we can just like look at it and tell so if we have two parallel lines Again, we have a transversal crossing it. Uh, we have alternate interior angles, and that is, I'm going to draw them in blue with a line right here and right here. Alternate interior angles, as long as we have a transversal crossing parallel lines, those will be the same. Uh, it is also true for the other ones right here and right here. Uh, interior alternate angles are going to be the same. But we also have another rule, alt alternate exterior angles. So this one here, put two lines through it and it's in red to show you that those are the same and that would apply to this angle and this angle as well. And we can kind of just see generally uh, from most drawings which one is obtuse and which one is acute, obtuse and acute. And we can apply that angle throughout the rest of the problem. So what we're going to do first I believe. Definitely check out these key ideas and the important points. We are going to kind of roll through here to the example. So example one, uh, reasoning about conjectures involving angles formed by a transversal. So we're going to make a conjecture that involves uh, the angles given one, two, three, four, uh, five, and we are going to prove it. So I will show how we're going to do that. This is going to prove that um, number two and number three are the same. That would be interior uh, alternate angles here. So the conjecture that we are going to prove, uh, when a transversal intersects a pair of parallel lines, the interior angles are equal. So that is what is given right here. That is my conjecture. So I'm going to make a little table. I'm going to say my statement on this side and then on the other side I'm going to put justification so the reason why I believe I can do that justification okay so the first statement I'm going to make um, to prove that 3 and 2 are equal is that 1 and 2 are equal angle 1 is equal to angle 2 and the reason that I can say that is because they are corresponding angles. So my justification for that is that they are corresponding. Now, uh, it's not necessarily important that you have all the exact right words to explain it when you write down the justification, but giving a reason, uh, you know, generally is important, uh, explaining why it is like that. So if you don't know what the word is, you might need to explain yourself a little bit more. We can also say that uh, angle one is equal to angle three. Angle one is also equal to angle three. And I know that because these are um, opposite angles, uh, vertically opposite angles. So these are opposite angles, which means that they are the same. I believe opposite only has one T, hard to say. Uh, you can let me know. And if one is equal to two, uh, and one is equal to three, these are for angles, that means that angle two must be equal to angle three. Uh, and 
the reason that we can say that is if both 2 and 3 are equal to 1, they must be equal uh, to each other. So let's see here. The reason that we would have is it is the transitive property. That's something that we're going to use uh, throughout the course, the transitive property. If two things equal the same, that means that they are also equal. Uh, we will use this many more times. It is known as the transitive property. So we've proven that angle two is equal to angle three. We've used, it, we, we've used rules that we know, that we've used before, or that maybe we learned today, but that's okay. Example two, example two. So we are given a kind of a box. No, that's not a box. Parallelogram, it's a parallelogram. We're given a parallelogram uh, and we want to determine the unknown angles. So that would be A, B, C, and D. So let's see here. Uh, I know that A and B are equal to one another, right? They are opposite uh, angles. They would be the same. You know, a transversal intersects the line. We have A and B equal to one another. And then A is corresponding to the angle 110 degrees. So that means that A is equal to 110 degrees and B would then equal 110 degrees. Use the corresponding rule to find out what A is. And because A and B are the same, they are both 110. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. I know that A and C, they are like opposite sides to a line that is crossing a straight line. So I know that the total of A and C must equal 180. A plus C must equal 180. We have uh, A here and C, this is the smaller angle and it would correspond to this angle here. So that means that these two angles would add up to 180 degrees. I know that A is 110, so 180 minus 110 degrees is equal to 70? 70 degrees, yes, 70 degrees. And then I know that C and D are um, alternate interior angles, so they would be the same. So C is equal to D, therefore D is also equal to 70 degrees. And it makes sense with how the box or the parallelogram is set up, uh, that they would be less than 90 degrees uh, and that A and B would be larger than 90 degrees. What we do when we get to these sections titled your turn is you will pause the video before I do it and you will try it out. Uh, you will see if you get it right after by, maybe you can skip forward maybe a minute or two and you'll see uh, if you got the right answer. If you didn't, maybe you wanna go back and watch how I did it. So if uh, you would, please pause here. And when you're done these two questions, unpause and we'll see if you got them right. So A, we are going to describe a different strategy that we could use to determine the measure of angle B. Uh, so angle B was also an alternate exterior angle to 110 degrees. So it is an alternate exterior angle here. This is the transversal and these are the parallel lines. It is an alternate exterior angle to 110. So uh, for A, it is an alternate alternate oh boy okay i'm gonna have to that doesn't work alternate all right i did it it is an uh, alternate exterior angle to the 110 degree angle Therefore, it is equal to it. So that is another strategy we could have used to find the measure of angle B. Question B asked, describe a different strategy you could use to determine the, the measure of angle D. 
Uh, the angle above 110 would be, we could call angle E. So the angle right above 110 could be considered angle E. Uh, and we could know that that is equal to D there. So it is a uh, corresponding angle to D. So angle above 110 degrees, we'll call it angle E of 70 degrees. Angle E is corresponding to uh, angle D. So that would be another way we could find angle D. If you have questions about that, please let me know. Saw something there that you're unsure about. I'd be happy to talk about it in class individually or as a whole. So now on to example three. I just feel like changing up the color, so I'm going to go to red. One side of a cell phone tower will be built as shown. Use the angle measures to prove that braces CG, BF, and AE, so that is all the uh, horizontal ones it looks like, are parallel. Uh, you can't really see at the bottom. You can a little bit, but we have angle 78 at the bottom left and angle 22 at the bottom right. So like if this is the bottom over here, this is the tower. We have an angle of 78 degrees here. And with this pole, 22 degrees here, just so you can see. I want to make sure that we get that. You might be able to see it on the screen. We have 22 degrees here and 78 degrees here for an angle. So we want to find out if this barrier, this line, this line, and then the one above it up here are all parallel. And we're going to do that by proving angles, by proving that angles are equal. So I know that the angle BAE is equal to the angle DCG. So the angle BAE, BAE is equal to DCG. So if those angles are corresponding, are the same, that means that those, ang that those uh, lines are parallel, right? If this is a transversal and these are the parallel lines, if those corresponding angles are the same, that means that the lines must be parallel. So therefore, C, G, and A, E are parallel. Okay, so that's a good thing. Two of them so far are parallel, but we need to find out if um, this line uh, BFG sorry I can't see because of my mic BF is equal to it so let's continue uh, we know that angle CGH is equal to angle BFG right FG CGH here and here so those are the same therefore these lines are parallel so therefore Line C, G, and B, F are parallel. And using the transitive property, because C, G, and A, E are parallel, and C, G, and B, F are parallel, that means B, F, and A, E must also be parallel. So if we use the transitive property, we can determine that they are all parallel. So using transitive property, They are all parallel. And that's a good thing for the cell phone tower. We want it to be able to stay up. Again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. But we're down to the practice. After the practice, I believe there's a quiz. Um, so once you're done and you're ready for the quiz, uh, please let me know. You'd want to be writing it by the uh, end of the week as we have you know, two lessons and a quiz a week. This is the second lesson, 2.2. We'll be writing a quiz next. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, again, be happy to answer them. Thanks so much.